Welcome to the Sunday School lesson. Dr. T.L. Lewis is our pastor. I'm Gwendolyn Taylor, Young Warrior Sunday School teacher, and Lucette McFord, our assistant teacher. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, creator of all things, once again, giving you praise and honor to your holy name, thanking you for another day to worship and to stand before your people, declaring what thus said the Lord. Father God, we are asking for prayer for the sick, the bereaved family, prisoners, and all my friends and family and loved ones. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, good morning again. Uh, our lesson today is continuing in the book of Acts. And in our adult topic is an Ethiopian is baptized. And in the young adult class is breaking down barriers. Again, our devotion reading comes from Isaiah 64 through 14. Our background scripture comes from Acts 8, 26 through 40. And our printed text is Acts 8, 29 through 40. Key verse. He commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him, Acts 8 and 38. Our lesson aims today as we go through it. Uh, we'd like to think about what did the Holy Spirit God Philip to do? What enabled him Philip to explain the scripture in understanding? What was God's divine plan for the for Philip and the unit meeting? Understand, understanding cultural and social uh, implication and boldly sharing the good news. There are two outlines in our lesson today. Uh, one is a prepared preacher, and that's going to take up Acts 8, 29 through 35. Our second outline is a prepared heart, and it's 8, 36 through 40. As you know, Acts was written by Luke. The purpose of Acts is to give an account of both the, give an account of the birth of the Christian church. Acts is known as an action, which is Luke says is on the move. And here we say, but shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and in Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. That's Acts 1 and 8. As we go through the lesson, uh, some of the key things to keep in mind, again, is how the Holy Spirit guided Philip. How Philip was enabled by the Holy Spirit to explain the scriptures in an understanding way. And how God's divine plan took action. His sovereignty plan. As we know, God has a sovereignty plan for each and every one of us. Uh, in our first verses, again, prior to the lesson in verses 1 through 8, we see, again, that it is on the action. We see that uh, there was an expansion of the church. And we saw that Stephen, who was the first martyr, that was killed because he was teaching the word of God. 
we saw that Saul, he was a devout persecution of the church. And this is before he was met on the Damascus Road and changed his name to Paul. We saw that there was a widespread of persecution that was going on, so the believers then had to scatter. Uh, we come to, in our lesson today, we're going to talk about Philip, and we're going to talk about a unit. Philip, he's an evangelist. He's a Greek-speaking Jew. He's one of the seven deacons chosen to help distribute the food. Uh, and he was of an honest rapport, and he was full of wisdom. He is not to be confused with Philip the Apostle. His ministry had taken him throughout the region. And then we see that God, the Holy Spirit, spoke to him and told him to go down a desert road. And sometimes when we hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us, we wonder, is that really the Holy Spirit or is it in my mind? <laughs> is it me speaking? Okay. And so then we get to verses 26 through 28, which is not in our lesson. We see that the Holy Spirit spoke and told, told him to go toward the south into Gaza, which is a desert road. You know, people didn't travel that road as much, so it was desert. Uh, Philip did not question the Holy Spirit. He went. He obeyed. He just did it. <laughs> like sometimes myself, I, I'm a little slow, <laughs> but he obeyed right off. Uh, he met an Ethiopian. Uh, his name, his, he was the unit. And this was a man of authority. He was under the Queen Candace, uh, Ethiopian. Uh, this unit was considered to be a royal attendant. Uh, he was appointed by kings to look over the queens. Uh, they were easily rise in the kingdom uh, within the royal uh, households. They served as trustees of the royal assets. That means that they had um, power over all the trustees, the committees, and stuff. Uh, they worked, uh, they were cast physically castrated. And they were also known as proselytes or Gentile. And these are people that was converted to Judaism. So when we get on to our lesson, which is our printed text, 29 through 40, first we're going to see the first outline is a prepared preacher. Okay. Let's see what's up. The Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. Okay, so here we see that Philip obeyed. He told him to go to the chariot, to this chariot. It was not just any chariot, but this one. So Philip did. And when he got there, as you can see, the man was reading, and he was reading, but he was not understanding what he was reading. And sometimes we as Christians, we read, but we really don't understand, but our pride or whatever may get in the way of asking questions. There's no harm in asking questions. In order to understand, that's why we go to Sunday school, 
And that's why we have Bible study, so that we may ask questions for understanding. As you know, when the preacher is preaching, we can't stop him to say, hey, can you explain that to me? And so, therefore, it's important for understanding. Uh, and, and the man, he asked for understanding. And uh, he said, what are you reading? And so he, Philip saw where he was reading from, and Philip met the man where he was. And the man invited him to get up in the chair to go with him. And as he went with him, he, uh, he asked him about this particular scripture that he was reading that was from Isaiah. And so Philip met the man where he was. He did not start from the beginning. He did not start at the end, but where the man is. So when we are evangelizing to people, we need to start on their level where they are. Answer the question as to what they are asking, and no more or no less. And this is what uh, Philip did. And it's important for us to read, for us to study, and for us to be taught. No one is beyond the area where you say, I, can, I can't learn anything. We all have something to learn, so we all can be taught. And, and we are to be taught the word of God. And even as teachers, we need to be taught and be able to rightly divide the word of God, the word of truth. So we see here Philip was able to meet the man, the unit where he was, and he began to explain the scriptures to him. Here, uh, Philip also presented the good news of Jesus Christ. I can understand that uh, in his teaching of the man that not only did he explain the scriptures, but he also went into the baptism of it. It's not in our lesson. It's not, you know, specifically saying, but down further we'll see that he must have gone a little further than just uh, in stopping right there. He explained Jesus as a servant of God, the suffering and humiliation that he took upon for our sins. So it's important also when we're teaching Jesus that we let people know that Jesus died for our sins. You know, he had no sins, but he died for our sins. And so he, he, uh, he, and he also exalted Jesus, God. We must not allow barriers such as cultures and social status to prevent us from proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. That sometimes what we do, we may think, oh, this person is above us, but no one in God's outside is above anyone. We are all on the same level. Um, and so don't let the social sta status nor culture you know, stop us from uh, uh, telling them about God's word. And Philip was given the opportunity to teach. He took it. A lot of times we may be given the opportunity to teach and say, we come up with excuses. Oh, I can't approach this person. But if the Holy Spirit is within us and we have accepted that, then we know the Holy Spirit is going to guide us. He's not going to send us somewhere uh, that he has not already prepared. And we see in this first outline that he had already prepared Philip's heart. Philip was given the opportunity to teach, and it was based on Scripture. And he met the man again at his level of understanding. Our focus, our folk, our focus point is uh, evangelizing should be Christ-centered, linked to Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and then uh, some essential facts is that we should be submission to the Holy Spirit, knowledge of the Word, and Christ-centered to prepare for the present and the, to prepare to present the gospel of salvation to all the world, to all of lost humanity. In other words, 
we must study so that when we are talking to someone, we are comfortable in talking to them and explaining what is going on. And the main thing is that we want them to be saved like we are, and that is to present salvation to the lost world. We also see that Philip used the Old Testament. A lot of times people may think that the Old Testament does not play a role, but it's the history, and, and, and that is important. So we see that he used the Old Testament to lead this man up to faith in Jesus Christ. God's world, word is applicable to all people and of all ages. The Holy Spirit teaches and the humans evangelize. In other words, when we study the word of God, the Holy Spirit guides us. It tells us. But then as human beings, we are to reach one another. And so uh, God gave Philip an open door. He always gives us an a open door, like I said before, to approach someone. And when that Holy Spirit, if you are uncomfortable with doing that, then just say a little prayer, and God will guide us. The Spirit of God prepared the man's heart. And our second outline is a, is a, I mean, he prepared the preacher, I'm sorry. Uh, the second outline is he prepared a heart. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here's water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. The eunuch answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Amen. So we see that here, a prepared heart. We see that the confession of faith, the eunuch confessed his faith, like each and every one of us in this room. You know, I look around and I see that we are all uh, here. So we confessed our faith in Jesus Christ. Then um, the unit, this is the first conversion of the Ethiopian uh, that demonstrated the mechanism of the preaching of the gospel. In other words, the gospel was preached to him. He understood it. He confessed his faith. And now they get to a point where he sees some water. And for one to accept the truth, it must be taught. And Romans 10, verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That's without someone teaching or preaching. So you just can't say, I believe. What do you believe in? You know, we believe in a lot of things. For instance, we we believe that uh, we these seats is gonna hold us up. <laughs> but it's different to believe in the Messiah that Jesus is the Son of God, and that He came for our salvation, for our sins, that He died for our sins. Uh, God's desire is for every believer to evangelize, and to teach the word of God. So we are confessing our faith in Christ. We are equipped to teach others. But first of all, we must study. Uh, we must study the scripture and follow the directions of the Holy Spirit. Study the scriptures to rightly divide the word of God. We must meet people where they are, and at their level. And Jesus must be the focus of it all. I know I'm kind of early, so do you have any questions? <laughs>